It has been a wonderful week. As we were planning, we were thinking about how we could provide opportunities to hear from some diverse perspectives from our students to our arts organizations and to um, John Lithgow and Representative Shelley Pingree. We were looking for hopefully a little bit of inspiration, which I know I definitely always feel when I hear the voices of our young people. And we were also looking for information to help folks to be successful as they continue this work beyond the month of March. And again, there'll be additional resources coming your way. But I think most importantly, as everyone has echoed today, we wanted to honor the work of arts educators and art students. Um, the idea that it has not been easy for, for folks who are working in education right now. And we all have a lot of work to do to continue uh, advocate for arts education well beyond the month of March. As John said, the arts are good for children and what is good for children is good for the future of our country. And that can feel really overwhelming <laughs> because it's kind of like, where do I start? And it would be silly of me to not acknowledge sometimes the systemic tension that can happen when you're not sure what the next right thing to do is. And so to encourage us all, I thought I would <laughs> take a moment to share where I turn when I'm having those moments of, of doubt or systemic tension. And of course, that would be to the arts. And so when I think about the story of the little hummingbird, if any of you have seen it, it's um, based on a South American indigenous story about a courageous little hummingbird, I have one on my necklace, um, who defies fear and expectations to attempt to save the forest from a fire. And that had that lesson of I, all I have to do is try a little bit, a little bit at a time, one drop at a time. And that kind of makes me think of Frozen 2 and in that moment where Anna is thinking, how do I find the next right thing? Um, that song inspired by a conversation with Kristen Bell and the director about anxiety and depression. And, and all we have to do is one right next thing. And then, then when we know it, we're putting one foot in front of the other and moving, moving right along. And so when we are thinking about how to wrap up today, we are thinking about what could we share um, as a tool or a strategy when we may be exhausted or facing uncertainty, and especially as educators, decision fatigue is a thing, thinking that we make um, research suggest 1500 decisions a day. Um, so it's helpful to have a flexible and easy to remember process. And so with that, we wanted to share an adaptive action cycle. Three simple questions that is a process for iterative and flexible thinking um, that can be used not only in your professional setting, but it can also be used in your personal life. Um, so those three simple questions, what, so what, and now what? Um, there are a lot of really fantastic articles about how to use it, and I linked in the Human uh, Systems Dynamic Institute as one place. Um, but it kind of reminds me as a teacher when we're creating learning intentions of what are we learning today? So why, why does that matter to us? And now what are we going to do? Or like with middle schoolers when they walk in, what are we doing today? Or when you tell them what you're doing and they say, so wh why do we have to do this? And then the now what, oh, you're actually gonna make us do this. Um, so when we're thinking about those three questions, the first question, what, invites curiosity and observation. And as John was speaking today about the art's ability to spark that curiosity, um, that's what we want um, for ourselves and for our students. So what do you notice? What do you wonder? Uh, what do you see? What are you feeling? Just like with our students, we ask questions because getting curious can challenge our assumptions or expectations and encourage us to see things with new perspectives, just like Corey and Shannon and Melissa encouraged us to do last night in our Creating Me session. The second question, so what, invites thoughtful consideration um, into options and implications. So what does it matter? So what does this mean for me? What could this mean for others? What might happen in the future? And finally, that third question that ignites ownership and action. Now, what can I do? What can others do? And what can we do together? So it can help us to narrow down something specific that's within our control. And then it becomes an iterative process, one step at a time. Every ending action makes the next beginning question necessary. It supports our ability
to get curious, even in the most uncertain of times, knowing that there are many things in life we cannot control, but we can control our own curiosity. The arts spark that in all of us. We can control our perspectives, our emotions, and our next action point. It reminds me why we want this not only for us as adults, but for our students, and the arts can get us there. It also honors that there are multiple pathways to get there. So as we are wrapping up um, our day today, based on what you've learned or experienced today or in the other sessions for Arts Center, um, arts Education for Maine, a week-long celebration, my questions are, what is happening in arts education in my, and I left it blank because it might be in your classroom, it might be in your school, it might be in your community or a state level, depending on your your sphere of influence, but what's happening in arts education? And then ask, so what does that mean for the young people of my school, community, or the young people of Maine? And then now what? What is one action I might take toward promoting or encouraging arts education in that sphere of influence? So for example, as an, a music educator, my what was we're no longer offering pre-K music and visual art with specialists due to COVID. The schedule was, was a real challenge, and so we no longer have that. And so what? As many folks mentioned, arts education during childhood is one of the strongest predictor of arts participation as an adult. I also got that from the Arts for Life's sake, so check out so many great pieces of research and information. And so now what? That one thing, I'm going to initiate a conversation with my visual art colleague um, and pre-K colleague. Just kick it off, one thing. If that's not your sphere of influence or that might make you, you might not have time for that, maybe what's happening is arts educators and students are exhausted. And what does that mean? Just like Madison said, teacher burnout is real. Folks are leaving the profession. People might be falling out of love with the arts at a time when we need it now more than ever. So one action you might take, can you send a thank you note? to an arts educator or an arts student in your life. Send a text, send an email, or a handwritten thank you note. Thank you, mom. Um, could it be that this week you learned more about what the, the power of student voice in an arts advocacy, advocacy, excuse me. So what's happening? You want more student voice in your arts advocacy at your school, so what? It means that for young people, they can feel empowered and share their stories and impact others. And then now what? Maybe your one step is you reach out to Melissa Burkhold or you reach out to your school and think about how you can work with students and Melissa to um, initiate a student leadership team at your school. So many different options and places to get access to information and resources. So we wanted to give folks a moment just to breathe, because I, I need one, and take a minute to ask yourself, what's happening? So what does that mean? And now what? What's one thing you can do? And we'll invite you to have a challenge of choice if you'd like to offer your now what in the chat. And maybe that will spark some inspiration for someone else. Or maybe there's a connection for someone who is also attending, who's waiting to find you and make that connection to move arts education forward. And for those of you who are saying, Caitlin, I'm exhausted, it's the end of the day. We've had so many great examples between John and our students of different ways to advocate for arts education in your community, reaching out to arts educators or students. I mean, Madison was all over it. Attend events, elevate what's happening, share what's happening. If you wanna do that in the chat, share something that's going well. Finding and connecting to artists and community organizations um, that was brought up on our Tuesday session. Connecting with artists or community arts organizations to learn more about how to bring these opportunities to students. I mean, we can connect with the Maine Arts Commission. Maybe that's your now what I know Martha presented on Monday and shared about all the great work they're doing to help increase access um, and connections between teaching artists in schools. Maybe you're initiating or circling back to a conversation with the decision maker in your local area or on the state or federal level. And again, gratitude goes a wild, it goes a real long way. So with that, we're essentially saying, now what? 
Our goal at the Alliance and the Arts or Basic Coalition is to be able to support you in this work moving forward. We are well aware that it can feel daunting, but we want folks to know that they are not alone. And as you know, has been brought up a couple times today, there are people working at all levels because we know how important arts education is for all Maine students. We can see a future where all students have equitable access to arts education in Maine, and we each have the opportunity to be that catalyst for continued conversation and positive change in our own communities, and even if it's just one step at a time. So we wanted to say thank you again to John Lithgow and to Rob Townsend and to Emma and to Jessica and to Martha and to Melissa who helped reach out and make it possible for him to share his wise, wise words and experience with all of us as a little motivation. We wanted to say a huge thank you to Representative Pingree for all the work that she's doing. And again, I should have mentioned in the last slide, these, this will be shared out also with the recording. And there are links, clickable links, to access and learn more about the Arts Education for All Act, specifically through um, the Americans for the Arts page. And then also, if you're really nerdy about policy like I am, you can follow it on the bill itself on congress.gov. We also wanted to say uh, an incredible thank you to our student leadership group, to Madison and to Colette and to all the folks um, who have presented on Tuesday and who are a part of the group and to Melissa for all of the work that they're doing and for Herman Pan's um, John Coleman, their director and all of the students um, who put on some fantastic performances. Again, resources will be included in the slide deck. Thank you to Hannah Fluelling, who is a music educator, I believe, at Thornton Academy. She created all of the logos and the graphics um, that we've been sharing out. We could not do it without her. And then Catherine Newell, who helped create the slide deck um, for, for today. And again, I think huge, huge thank you to all of our Arts or Basic Coalition partners, especially to Sandy Berry from the MMEA, to Corey Bucknam from MAEA, Martha Piskaskis from the department, oh, excuse me, from the Maine Arts Commission, oh boy, it's time to wrap up, I guess, and from Jay to Jason from, from the Department of Education, and thank you, Jason, for being our tech person, for getting this all put together, and to Melissa Burkhold, who not only has represented Maple this week and MMEA and um, works with the Maine Alliance for arts education as our student advocacy program director we are this would not be possible without all of you and we're grateful for the opportunity to offer this information forward and to be leaders on top of the work that we're already doing and then finally to arts educators and our students and all of our attendees we are so grateful that you took the time not only to engage with us today but we're hopeful that you'll continue to engage with us as we move forward and work to to promote and encourage education in all of the arts for all Maine students. Please stay connected with us to learn more about our work or to support our work. Please visit um, www.maineartsed.org or follow us on social media at Maine Alliance, um, on Facebook at Maine Alliance for Arts Education. So thank you again to all of our panelists, presenters, all the folks in front of this, the scene, behind the scenes, and all of our attendees. We're grateful for all that you do. Thank you again. Have a wonderful afternoon.